The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning and welcome to the Georgetown Presbyterian Church. We are glad that you've joined us for worship on this Lord's Day. Welcome to any visitors who are here with us this morning and welcome to all of you worshiping with us online. Please note the announcements that are in your bulletin, and today I just would like to remind you that this Sunday after service and next Sunday after service, the children will be having a lemonade stand outside the church in order to raise money for their fish banks. So please visit the lemonade stand. There'll be some baked goods available as well, and support the children in fundraising to help raise their money for their collective GPC fish banks. Now I would like to invite forward Elder Lisa Bailey and Elder Carl Madison to offer a minute for stewardship. Good morning. I'm Lisa Bailey, chair of GPC's 2024 stewardship campaign, Sharing God's Story. Today is a very exciting day. On this St. Patrick's Day, and on the 244th year of our beloved church, we have found the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. In the recent survey, you told us what you wanted this church to accomplish and what was most meaningful to you. Because of your generosity, we have almost reached the ambitious goal that was set. We are at 96% of the $800,000 goal, the most given since before the pandemic and I know that with a few more contributions, you will put us over the top. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your generous contributions, for your valuable time, for your incredible talents, and for your love for this church. Thank you also to my stewardship committee for your hard work, Carl Madison, Bradley Justice, Rob McLeod, and Nancy Kuhn. Thank you to our pastors for all of your support. And most of all, thanks to you, our dedicated members and friends of GPC. Now, let me turn it over to Carl Madison, Chair of the Session Stewardship Committee. Thank you, Lisa. I'm going to continue the words thank you. Uh, thank you for the commitments that we, that you and I have made together for what we're going to do in this coming year, your financial commitments and those sitting next to you um, and those of us who are online <clears throat> planning for what's turning out to be already a, a remarkable and exciting year, 2024. So collectively, you and I are grateful to one another, to each of us who have said yes to have said, yes, I will be here in the coming year, not just to sit and receive God's word, but to give ministry here to one another and to the people outside of these doors. So fantastic work to the team. Uh, thank you all. There's going to be more gratitude, of course, but we're going to do that as we uh, share a very special cake at Punch Punch that's hosted by Cynthia and Steve uh, Johnson in the Georgetown room. Um, we just can't wait to thank you. Uh, and save a little bit of room for the lemonade, sta lemonade stand and bake sale. Um, that's some good stuff. Thank you.
please join me in the call to worship. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in Christ will not die. Those who believe in Christ will have life, life that is truly life. Do you believe this? We believe. Help our unbelief. Let us worship God. be seated. Last night was the men's college basketball ACC championship game between North Carolina and North Carolina State. Mine is a divided household. John is a lifelong NC State fan and I am a devoted Carolina fan. So last evening in our house, I am downstairs watching the game. John is upstairs. <laughs> and as soon as the buzzer sounded at the end of the game, to everyone's surprise, NC State had won. As you would expect, there was jubilation on the court, and there was anguish. There were tears of joy, and there were tears that accompanied the slipping away of a dream. And then, as is custom, the players line up to shake hands and to say to one another, good game. This always strikes me as astonishing. These players have just given their all. They've tussled and fouled and trash-talked, and now before they move on, they stop and shake each other's hands. It is, I think, an act of ordinary grace. Whatever has come before, whatever our hearts still hold, there's a moment of pause to see the humanity in one another and to say what has just happened is not all that defines us. And church, that's why we come to God in confession each and every week. It is a pause to be reminded of our humanity and the humanity of every other person to be reminded once again that whatever has happened, the good, the bad, the ugly, it's not all that defines us. To receive again the ordinary and extraordinary grace that tells us we are loved, 
We are forgiven. We are made new. I said I would confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Let us pray. Merciful God, long ago you made a covenant with your people, and they broke it, and so you wrote it on their hearts. You write it on our hearts, and yet we break that covenant every day in small ways and big ways. Center us again in your word. Make us to set aside all riches and power and productivity. Turn our hearts to you once again. Fix our lives on your ways. Amen. Amen. Friends, the good news of our faith is that whatever has happened, whatever we have done, the good, the bad, and the ugly is not all that defines us. God's love and mercy for you is sure and steadfast. That is what defines you. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. I would like to invite all the children who are here to join me up on the chancel steps. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Come on up. Come on up. It's nice to see everybody today. Got everybody up here? A few more coming? Come on, girls. Come on, Teddy. All right, here we go. So, today is uh, a special day. What day is today? St. Patrick's Day, that's right. And a lot of you are wearing some green, aren't you? Now, what are we doing on St. Patrick's Day? What is, all, what is it all about? Yeah. You tried to catch the leprechaun? Yeah, you had a trap for it? Okay, what about you, Julie? Yeah, we're celebrating the saint. His name is Patrick, right? So today is a day for, a special day, for a man named Patrick who actually was a preacher. He was a man who brought the word of Jesus to Ireland. And they celebrate him because he was special to their country. And some people in our country have roots and have family back in Ireland. So that's why you see lots of people here wearing their green, and there's lots of fun little things that happen on St. Patrick's Day, right? So one of the things that we celebrate is the blessings that St. Patrick offered to the Irish, but the music and the blessings that came out of his ministry. And today, I want to give you each a special blessing. So how in the church do we give blessings? You could whisper it into your ear. I like that idea. Yeah. What else? We could pray it out loud. That's right. A baptism is a blessing, right? We do blessings with water. Mary? With water. That's right. Blessings in the church often happen with, with water. Any other ideas for how we could do a blessing? Here. Could tell everyone that it won't take very long. One blessing for everyone at the same time. I like the efficiency of that, right? So I had an idea for a special little blessing today. I brought something. What's that? It's a shamrock, right? Now, this is a pop quiz. 
If you want to illustrate Christian doctrine, you can use the shamrock to teach children about the doctrine of the Trinity. Trinity. I knew you knew it. Yes, the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, three in one in a shamrock. There you go. That's the phrase today, guys. <laughs> Shamrocks are the symbol of St. Patrick's. And on this, the back of this one, it says, it says, may the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your fields, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. That's an Irish blessing for everyone today. So everyone gets to take a little shamrock home, all right? Come on up, everybody grab one. And then we're going to say a prayer together. All right, I'll hold up the box. Can you take one? All right, I'll pass it around. I'll pass it around. Don't worry. Everyone's going to get one. Well, the, the blessings are all the same, everybody. They're not different. It's not fortune cookies here. All right, blessings. There we go, everybody get one. All right, Rick, hold up your shamrock. Trinity, right there, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Okay, did you get one? Hold up your shamrock, oh, it's you. Anybody else, anybody else, anybody else? All right, okay, great. All right, I want you to hold it in your hand like this. Okay, this is the, the blessing it said is God's gonna hold us in the hold of God's hand. So we're gonna do prayer pose with our shamrocks. Close our eyes, bow our heads. Dear God, we thank you that each and every day you offer blessings in our lives, blessings of families and friends and a church, but most of all, the blessing of Jesus Christ, who loved us, who teaches us, and who guides us. We pray all this in the name of your Son. Amen. All right, boys and girls, we now we're going to have another blessing. Oh, here we go, guys. Look, come on, take your blessing. Sorry, we missed you. Okay, so we're gonna have a we're gonna have a baptism now. So everyone, scooch back, everybody off the stairs. Would the McLeod family come forward? And I would like to invite Reverend McLeod to join us today, who also bears the distinguished title of grandfather. So we are honored to have Reverend McLeod participating in the sacrament this morning. All right, boys and girls, do you want to all sit down? Get a seat? All right. Sally and Rob, in presenting your child for baptism, desiring that she may be grafted into Christ as members of Christ's body, the church, do you believe in one God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and do you confess Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? And as parents and godparents, do you promise, depending on the grace of God, to teach Millie the truths and duties of the Christian faith, and by prayer and example, to bring her up in the life and worship of the church? And we ask now all the people gathered here representing God's church, do you welcome this child? Do you renew your commitment with God's help to live before all God's children in a kindly and Christian way and to share with them the knowledge and love of Christ? If so, please say we do. We do. All right. Now, Andrew, would you be able to help me now? Yeah? All right. Climb on up there. You get all the way in top step. You want to hold my hand for a second? All right. You sturdy? It's a little wobbly, isn't it? All right, I feel nervous about this. Okay. Remember how heavy this is, Andrew? This guy. Okay. Andrew's going to pour it while we say our prayer, okay? We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. Pour out your spirit upon us and upon this water. May all who pass through these waters be delivered from death to life, from sin to righteousness. Bind them to the household of faith and guard them from all evil. Strengthen them to serve you with joy this day and always. Amen. Good job, Andrew. Come on down. All right.
Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in welcoming this newly baptized child of God? Andrew, would you like to come and get the present for Millie? Would you like to come over here? That's for your sister, okay? Can you take that? All right, you keep track of that for her, okay? All right, thank you very much. Boys and girls, you may now go back to your parents. You may go off to the nursery. You may go to Sunday school, or you may go out and work that lemonade stand, all right? Please be seated. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, be thou our guide, for our life shall last to our eternal home. Amen. The first lesson this morning comes from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. Listen for God's word. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
Our second lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 12. Listen for God's word. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some of the people who wanted to see Jesus aggressively pushed through crowds to get close to him. Some of the people who wanted to see Jesus climbed up trees to catch a view of him as he was passing by. Some of the people who wanted to see Jesus broke through the roofs of homes to lower themselves into the place where he was speaking. But the Greeks, they did not push in the house, they did not break through the roof, they politely stated their desires. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. I love their manners. <laughs> At this point in the story, Jesus is really popular. His reputation precedes him everywhere that he goes. It's Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, son of Mary and Joseph, Jesus the healer, Jesus the prophet, Jesus the one that some are saying is the son of God. Jesus, savior of the world. Lots of people wish to see Jesus. They're intrigued, they're hopeful, they're searching. The delegation of Greeks wanted to find out more about him, and so they do what polite, civilized, educated people, they don't climb trees or scramble up roofs, they get out their phones and make some calls. <laughs> One of the Greeks says, yeah, I know this guy, he's supposed to be tight with Jesus, his name's Philip, he's Greek, like us. My mom plays bridge with his mom. We'll call him. Philip's going to introduce us to Jesus. So they call Philip. Philip calls Andrew. Andrew and Philip, they go and they talk to Jesus about this meeting with the Greeks. But the problem is, the time has already come for Jesus to head to Jerusalem. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, he said. It was time for Jesus to fulfill his mission. He had to press on. No more pastoral visits. This is not the time for this type of ministry. Now we know that the Greeks did accept the gospel and hear the good news because we can see this from the evidence of where the early church spread. But if the delegation didn't receive an audience with Jesus, then how did they come to believe? Philip and Andrew must have explained something to them that Jesus had somewhere to be, someplace important to go. We know that the disciples, they didn't understand everything at this point. So all they could do was tell the Greeks what they had seen of Jesus thus far. One of the things that I appreciate about the disciples is that they never fully understand Jesus. They try hard, they mean well, but they only get him in part. I feel the same way. I understand some things about Jesus, but there are gaps. Certainly questions when we do meet. The disciples who actually knew him also have gaps, and it makes me feel a little bit better about what I bring to the table. The other thing that's comforting about the disciples is that despite their flaws, despite their gaps, despite the mishaps they make along the way, they actually did a really good job of being disciples. We give them a hard time, 
but they told stories about Jesus in compelling ways. They told about the mistakes that they had made in front of Jesus and the ways that he forgave them and embraced them. He talked about what it was like to be a follower and how it had changed their lives personally. Peter and Andrew and James and Philip and Thomas and Matthew and the whole gang of them, they did a good job. Good enough to pass the faith to the next generation. And that was the calling Come, be fishers of men, tell the good news, show other people who wish to see Jesus how to find him. The conduit of the Christian faith is relationships. It always has been. Faith is passed from a father to a daughter. It's passed from a grandmother to a grandson. It's passed from a coach to a player. It's passed from one college roommate to another. Faith is passed when one person has stories to tell about Jesus and shares them with someone else. Now, sometimes we like to abdicate this responsibility to the professionals. You like to think you need a special master's degree to talk about Jesus, or at least a big black robe if people are going to take you seriously. Well, it's not true. It wasn't true for Andrew, it wasn't true for Philip, it wasn't true for any of the early disciples. There's nothing remarkable about of any of these guys, except that they knew Jesus, except that they had stories to tell. Paul in Romans 10 says, how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one in whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? Faith is passed because people are willing to share their stories. Faith is passed by people who set examples for us how we live in our daily lives. When I did my doctoral work, I had the privilege of interviewing CEOs and generals and senators and presidents and people who were in positions of authority, but also who had strong Christian faith. And one of the questions that I asked everyone is, how did you come to believe? One of the people, he said to me that he went to church every Sunday with his parents, but they never spoke of faith at home. He said he never really thought it mattered that much. He said he just thought it was something they did on the weekends. Then when he was 12 years old, his father took him on a camping trip. They were staying in cabins with bunks, and His father thought he was asleep on the top bunk, but he looked over and he saw his six foot three father kneeling on the cement floor praying. Witnessing that one action alone was enough to make him realize that faith mattered to his father and faith should matter to him. And from that day forward, he took it seriously. And it buoyed him through trials and tribulations because of that one sermon his father preached on a camping trip. No robes required for that sermon. About a year ago, I realized that I was long overdue to teach my daughter how to ride a bike. I had a lot of good excuses why it hadn't happened before, but it was getting kind of embarrassing how old she was that she couldn't ride a bike. But it was COVID, and there's cobblestones, and bugs. These were all excuses that I made for why I hadn't taught my daughter how to ride a bike. And so eventually I decided I'm going to overcome this shortcoming as a parent, and I did the obvious thing. I went online to research places where I could take her, to learn how to ride a bike, like a camp. (laughs) And then I saw the prices. (laughs) Because you can pay people to teach your children to ride bicycles. But most people don't. (laughs) This was something I could do myself, and I did it in one day, and there were bugs out there. 
And she can ride a bike. Thank you. <laughs> now you get the connection, right? When the Greeks called up Philip and asked about faith in Jesus, they did the obvious thing. Go online, find an expert. Let's find someone to tell them about Jesus. But Jesus was busy. He had things to do, and so they had to do it themselves. And so they did. Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you what it's like to be his follower. Let me tell you about the things that he can do. Let's not outsource this to other people. Let's not assume that the Sunday school teachers got it. We don't need to tell our kids that Jesus loved them. Let's not assume our cancer, our friend who is scared to death about her cancer diagnosis believes God is holding her in the midst of that chaos. Let's remind her ourselves. Let's not assume our colleague who's anxious and worried about the state of the world couldn't stand to hear a piece of good news about God's hope for the world and love for creation. Let's not assume our parents at the end of their lives don't need some reassurance themselves about God's eternal promises of salvation. Everyone needs to hear or see a sermon from time to time. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said there is only one preacher, Jesus. And we preachers preach on Sundays to enable you preachers to preach Monday through Saturday. There are a lot of people who wish to see Jesus. They just don't know where to look or who to call. But right here we have a room full of people with stories to tell. Right here we have a room full of preachers. So for now, it's your turn. As they say in the radio, over and out. Amen. Let us profess the faith of the Church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we lift our hearts and minds to you in prayer. Joining our voices with the great communion of saints who lift their prayer and their praise to you and who have lived by your grace alone. We give you thanks on this spring weekend for the community of the faithful who have taught us about acting justly, loving mercy, and walking humbly with you. For the great leaders of our nation, the public servants, the prophetic voices, for preachers, parents, Sunday school teachers who have encouraged us to grow in mind and heart, for all those who have mentored us and shaped us in the faith, that we might inherit this gospel with all its joys and responsibilities. Keep us focused, O Lord, on kingdom living, knowing we are in good company when we do so. Living God, you came to our world through Christ to help and to heal and to save. And so now we pray for all those in any kind of need. Pray for the sick and the suffering, the poor and the hungry, the lonely and the unloved, the anxious, the sorrowful, the bereaved, the hopeless. Lift these, your beloved children, into your graces, O Lord. Living God, there is so much need around us, in our streets, in our city, in our country, in our world. Show us tangible ways where we can respond. Give us the will and the commitment and the love to reach out in the name of Christ, offering something of ourselves to others. Gracious God, we pray for this congregation beginning our 245th year that you might unite us in our common faith and strengthen the community within these walls that we might go forth into the world in confidence and faith. Help us to enact the beloved community you have called us to be. Teach us how to walk alongside one another in our journeys of life and faith, and make us a living witness to the reconciling power of Jesus Christ. Merciful Lord, help us to follow you this week faithfully. Help us to follow your footsteps, pursuing the way of love and accepting the road of sacrifice. Help us to follow after you, letting your presence fill our hearts, direct our thoughts, and guide our actions this day and always. We pray all this in the name of your Son, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I invite you to find the red books at the end of your pews, and please sign your attendance. If you'd like to receive emails, please clearly write your email address. And if you have new contact information, please leave it there. Also, you can indicate if you're interested in learning more about membership of this church, 
or if you'd like to receive a call from one of the pastors. As our offering is received, we say thank you for the ways that you make possible the ministry and the witness of this church. Let us now be joyful givers. Our offering will be received. your name. Bless all that we offer you now, ourselves, our time, our possessions. May these things offer grace and favor in the name of your Son to the whole world. Keep us striving after you in this coming week, faithful to your name and to the callings you have given us. To Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
Now go into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. Strengthen the weak. Support the faint-hearted. Help the suffering. Honor all of life. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen.